How's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of the Great Ace Attorney Adventures Blind. So, last time, we just did some more cross-examining. We did some of the uh, judicial findings or closing argument section, summation examination. And now we are back to cross-examining these two because Von Zeeks was a jerk and did not want us to call in, um, I think it was the maid as a witness. Yes. Which leads us to here, so we have to cross-examine these fools again. So yeah, we'll just hop right in. Oh, fuck. <laughs> I just kicked the- Oh my god. I'm kicking everything in this desk right now. This Good case boy. has nothing to do with Mr. Ma no, oh my. Well, I already messed up my lines. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Gardo, believe me, Helena Bobby is good for his work. You see, sir, the windows on the top floor of the Gardo house are top-hinged casements. I don't even know what I said. I don't even know what that is. Obviously, if anything had been thrown out of the window, we would have seen it. I did leave the scene to go and fetch help, but my trusty Roly was there to make sure nothing was disturbed. Did I mention I hate my wife? I didn't take my eye off the crime scene for one moment, sir. Nothing strange to report on that front, sir. Wow. So true. Oh. So true, Buster. Well, this is quite startling. Top hinge casement windows. That detail was not in the police report, Constable. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, sorry about that. I must um, have been a little drowsy. Um, <clears throat> you cannot excuse your sins with drowsiness every time, Foxster. Oh, you know what? I, I've had about enough of your shit. Take it. No, sir. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, sorry, but... What exactly is a top-hinged casement window? You know what? I'm on the same page as you. <laughs> and you don't have a brain. So true. You cannot excuse your ignorance with such trite remarks, my learned friend. Bro, how the hell do you expect me to know this stuff? We don't have the same architecture. <laughs> of course. Sorry, jackass. I did not realize how unstable this desk was. Oh, yeah, it is very Many unstable. Many things to learn tonight. I found it, Mr. Nadoro. <laughs> Cast your mind back to the windows in Mr. and Mrs. Garadup's room. All right, I'll try. Yeah, I don't see anything. Oh, yeah, there was a window. So the window is a window, and sometimes it opens. So the window opens in order to allow air to circulate inside the house. A see-through wall. <laughs> this transparent ah. wall sometimes opens. That animation. But as it's a top-hinged casement window, it swings open along the upper edge, you see. I'm glad you rectified your ignorance. The casement window's most prominent feature is that you need to dangle your nuts outside the window. Is it stay, a metal bar which prevents the window from being opened beyond a certain amount? To prevent dumb fox like you mm -hmm. from falling out. It, it prevents it opening? This is all news to me. Oh wow, you're really dumb. Absolutely correct, sir. In other words, if a book or a knife were to have been thrown through the open window, it wouldn't have worked. <laughs> I would have caught it in my mouth. <laughs> it would have clattered against the pane and fallen straight down to the pavement below into someone's butt cheeks. <laughs> no, that's Not so precise. Cheeks. You see the problem then. Good. Your education in windows is complete. There was never any possibility of either the book or the knife traveling 15 yards over the road or to getting into someone's ass. That is, unless the window pane had been shattered, something we've discounted already. Uh, that. that can't. be! Did you see that, Rowley? That young Japanese man just collapsed in agony oh my so God. funny! That was hilarious! <laughs> Oh my god, oh yes, my darling, I saw it. I saw how he crumbled before me. Make out with me now. Oh my god, oh, really? you're so strong. This is absolutely fucking disgusting. Um, who said that? How is this happening? Why is this straight couple in my court? <laughs> I haven't even started the cross-examination yet, and already my argument's been destroyed. Well, I guess I need to leave. <laughs> Counsel, if you could drag yourself upright again, the court awaits your cross-examination. Or down and left, as they say. Die. <laughs> that was a good one, Your Honor. My lord. My lord. Oh, good. Another desperate situation. I've only been in, you know, like 50 of these. <laughs> All right, shit stains. What do we got? Let's go. Cross examination. Constable Beats Report. Hold it! <laughs> what do you want? How could you say that for certain? A very good question, sir. And the answer is this. It has the noble founding principles of the force written on it as a reminder of all of us policemen of our sworn duty. He showed us that before, didn't he? Yeah, if you were paying attention. Uh, 
uh, Did I he? he I can't say I remember. To patrol the streets of London town and uphold the peace of the common man. That's what the job's all about. And that is why I could stand here today beside my long-suffering wife and tell you about these good for his word. I hate my wife, by the way. <laughs> While rubbing eyes, my eyes tired me li- <laughs> Oh, Rowley, you're so stupid! Manly! <laughs> I am a manly man. Of course I am, my darling Patricia. You know what's even more manly? I'm gonna go date other men. <laughs> Goodbye. That's pretty manly. Oh, Pat. Oh, Rowley! Get me out of here. <laughs> No, I don't think your relationship's very healthy. No, none of this is what I meant. I meant, how can you say for certain that this case has nothing to do with Mr. and Mrs. Garrido? Ah, I see, sir. You should have said so earlier, sir. Then I could have just called you a dumbass sooner. <laughs> kind of rude. Yes, well, so could you answer the freaking question, please? That was a waste of time, then. Absolutely, sir. I will answer it to the fullest of my ability, sir. There's a surprising reason why Mr. and Mrs. Garrido's domestic dispute can't be related to this case. Before I get into that, sir, just one thing. Yes? I'd very much like you and all your countrymen to understand the great British institution of Scotland Yard. No. So I hope you'll take back some tales of us London hobbies and how we uphold our guiding principles. I wasn't planning on going back just yet. I've only just arrived here, literally not even a week ago. <laughs> so to that end, sir, I'd be happy to lend you my royal quora. <laughs> <laughs> my qualm. <laughs> it sounded like a crow. Warrant card for your perusal. I sounded like a crow. <laughs> but I must warn you, I won't be able to get through to it without shedding a few tears. I cried like 50 times. Thank you. I'll try to never read it. No, read it. Please. <laughs> Please. It's super cool. I keep my Pokemon trading cards in there. That one's a Charizard. <laughs> By which you mean they don't open fully, is that correct? Yes, sir. They're just there to allow a bit of air through the house, you see, so, you know, if someone busts an ass, <laughs> then, you know, you can just open the window. So they're restricted to how much they open. And therefore, anything thrown out of the window from inside the room would simply strike the pane and fall to the street directly below. For clarity, allow me to mark the map. There. <laughs> Here is the location where objects could have fallen. Hmm, yes. Directly opposite the scene of the crime on the other side of the rather wide road. Would it have been so hard for somebody to mention this hop hinged casement thing before? <laughs> well, I have another question for you, Constable. No. I'm all that for you, sir. How do you even know? <laughs> like, do you even know how to do your job? <laughs> do you even know? Why would you have any idea what sort of windows Mr. and Mrs. Garrett's house is furnished with? <laughs> You're a dumbass. Well, uh, sir, that's very simple. You see, I helped with the investigation yesterday. <laughs> oh my god! Can you shut the hell up? You helped. In what way? Various members of the public were questioned in order to gather information about the case. That's right, sir. The sad truth is, we're all overworked. So even though it wasn't under the jurisdiction of my own beat, I obviously wanted to help. I see. Well, thank you. Oh, is it my turn now? What? No. I didn't okay. call on you. What? Well, I called on me. Hold it! I would much rather skip your lines if I could. It's my turn! But according to my notes here, the sun had gone down already and it was dark. Fool. Oh, but Rowley and I were strolling along, gazing at the night sky, looking for our lucky star. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sorry? The star that will guide us to eternal happiness. Can I guide you to answer the freaking question? No. I'm a flaming book <laughs> across the sky in front of us. It would have lit up like a shooting star. And if I'd seen a shooting star, I would have made a wish upon it. Oh, something stupid. Let Rowley be an inspector, what? I would have said. That doesn't sound very stupid now. Three times at least. Friggin' uh, Gregson comes in. Yeah, um, you're never gonna be one. So, uh, shut the fuck Give up, up and get out of here. kid. Shoot for the ground. <laughs> <laughs> of course, well, with the smog and everything, we couldn't actually see any stars. As when Herlock Sholmes strolls in. Sure, you're never going to be a detective ever. <laughs> or an you're never going to make it in this world. In <laughs> short, are you trying to say that neither a book nor a knife crossed the sky before you? Yes, sir. That is correct, sir. As sure as the night sky in London is starless, sir. Hmm. It certainly seems like they're telling the truth. And then we saw the poor woman fall to the ground, so we ran straight over to stab her and finish the job. <laughs> Help her. Those are two very different things. Sorry, I was very conflicted. I see. Yes, you said that you went to a nearby police box to fetch another officer. Is that right, or is that left? Um, I don't 
I'm not going to answer that question. That's right. right. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> if it had been on Relu's speed, I would have known exactly where I was going, of course. Don't feel bad, my love. I didn't. You're useless in every way. What the you fuck? You can't be expected to know the location of every police box on every beat. You're just a beta if you don't. All right, so whatever you say. So Rowley told me the way, only I sort of got a little lost on the way. <laughs> yeah, she sure did. I was hoping she'd never come back. <laughs> Patricia, my darling, Get that's lost. why I love you. Your terrible sense of direction is bewitching to that's me, and I wish you could have stayed gone forever. <laughs> oh, Pat. Oh, Rowley. This is disgusting. <laughs> Oh, please. <laughs> oh, please. So, I suppose I was gone for about 15 minutes. Should have been but forever. like I said, my Roly was at the scene the whole time, making sure nothing was disturbed. Can we just end those 15 minutes? <laughs> I was off duty at, at the time, of course, but a true Bobby is never really off duty, sir. Even when I'm on the shitter, I still have time. <laughs> He's quite literally on duty. He's in duty. Yeah, I'm in duty now. <laughs> nothing to report. Yes, you know what that fucking phrase means? That's correct, sir. I have my eyes wide open the wide. <laughs> I have my eyes open the wide. I have my eyes open wide the entire time. Never looked away for a second, except for just now. No one else approached the scene, and nothing was removed from it. Bro, you're falling asleep <laughs> so much, though. What do you mean your eyes yeah. were on it the whole time? I swear to that on the yard's honor, sir. <laughs> yeah, okay, buddy. Really, that seems a little strange. Beg your pardon, sir. Strange, sir. Seems altogether regular to me. This burnt copy of the Lion's Pride was originally in the Garadev household. So the question remains, how did it find its way into the hand of the victim? It just floated there. Can you shed any light on that, seeing as you were at the scene of the crime the entire time? <laughs> he just uh, goes, I handed it to them. <laughs> I gave it to the victim. I gave it to him. Ah, uh, could it be a different copy, sir? One that just happened to be burnt as well. Even if that were possible, why would the victim have been gripping a book like that in her hand? <laughs> Gorilla grip book. <laughs> As we can see from this photographic print, she had a bag over her shoulder. Ah, oh, shit. <laughs> well, sir, that book was a bloody turn from the moment we arrived at the scene. Is that so? <laughs> huh, yeah, okay. There's something about this statement that's not sitting right with me. The two myst mis mysterious? Two mysteries of how that knife ended up in her back and how the book ended up in her hand. There must be some common thread between them. I'm gonna figure out what it is. No, we're not. I'm so sorry, Mr. Naruhoto. I had no right to speak out. Uh, what do you mean? I requested the cross-examination of Mrs. Garadup without consulting you. Yeah, you did. You're banned. What? <laughs> Even if the judge did deny me. Oh, I see. Well, I agree with you. We but do need testimony. Yes. Uh, we do need Miss uh, fucking testimony from the bitch. If we're ever going to get to the truth in this matter. Do you really think so? Yeah. Well, think about it. No matter how far it is across the road or how that window works, there's a girl of books found its way to the scene of the crime somehow, didn't it? You're right. I always am. And then there was Mr. Garadev, Mrs. Garadev's reaction to me showing her knife. The woman's hiding something. I'm sure of it. You're right again. We need to use this cross-examination to uncover more clues. We'll get to the bottom of this one way or another. I swear. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, Susato's so basically my hit, man. Yeah, basically. Hold it. All right, we gotta pursue. All right, Patricia. All right. Patricia. Oh my God, why are we redoing this? I already told you, it's right there. Ooh, Briar Road. This is where the X fell. <laughs> X marks that spot. How did you even know? <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, uh, Excuse me. Uh, what the uh, hell? Uh, 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 uh. uh, do you have something to add, Mrs. Beat? Or are you just taking up air? <laughs> no. Hmm, sorry. <sighs> you look, well, delighted. Is there some particular reason for that? I just love being in the courtroom. Oh, I was just remembering, that's all. We really were so lucky. Lucky? What do you mean? Of course I feel terrible for the poor woman who was attacked. Don't misunderstand me, please. But we were just so lucky it didn't happen to him. Fuck, on <laughs> Roly's beat. It was so close, you see. Oh, uh, I hadn't realized. Wish I oh, had. Oh, yeah. Don't <laughs> ever do that again. <laughs> oh, yes, that's Street Briar Road. That's the boundary between Roly's beat and the next one. Isn't that right, my love? Are those people still talking to me? Bro. <laughs> Constable beat. I'm gonna I'm beat, your, beat ass. your ass. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh. Oh, 
I guess. Uh, I thought he that's just right. died. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, my spine just snapped in half. Yeah, literally 90 degree <laughs> angle. <laughs> and that's the reason I was helping out interviewing the occupants of the guard of household yesterday. Their house is on my beat, you see. So. Hmm. It really was cutting and close there. Oh. Constable, here, here. I wonder if I could t <laughs> if you could if you could clarify something. <laughs> Oh man, it's the Book of Tomes. It's my tiny book. If the Garadup household is on your beat, does that mean that the pavement next to it... Does that mean that the <laughs> pavement next to it is as well? It's not like a struggle. I did. Outside of Mr. Garadup's house. Yes, ma'am. The pavement on that side of the road is part of my beat. I see. I was unaware of that. Would've been nice to just, fucking know. Just think, if the woman had been attacked just on the other side of Briar Road... We would never have been able to go for that meal and celebrate our wedding anniversary. But that's the life of a bobby, after all. The life of a boob. <laughs> Extraordinary people are bobbies, are boobies, tirelessly <laughs> working for the benefit of all Londoners. <laughs> Do you know what I think? I really don't care what you think. Would you like to? I think it was the good lord's way of rewarding my Broly for all his hard work. Don't you think so, my darling? I want to get away from you. <laughs> That must be it, Pat, my love. That must be it. He's safe. <laughs> he sounded so sure. <laughs> I think perhaps we should make sure that we have that information officially <laughs> on record. Officially? <laughs> That's not a word. Leave it to me, Mr. Narado. I'll take care of it immediately. Yeah, you better. Because uh, what else are you good for? File. And now it's my turn, I think. <laughs> okay. My turn to die. <laughs> it is. Um, can I ask you something? Please, Mr. Lawyer, sir? Yeah, what do you want? I'd like to go home. Oh, well, we all want things, but we can't have them all. <laughs> yes, of course, what is it? But I deserve <laughs> them! You're, you're doubting us, aren't you? I can tell! Yeah, because your fucking boyfriend over here isn't even awake half the time. What do you mean? His eyes are open. What? I wasn't real. I mean, I was. I don't like you. What the fuck? What's she doing? Everyone likes me. <clears throat> Just ask Roly. Please, just because I'm a woman, it doesn't make my testimony any less valuable. Where did that come from? I'm a woman. <laughs> you just... Oh, wait, fuck. You might just see me as the wife of a policeman, but I'm a woman of my word, I am. I'm a woman. I'm a woman. <laughs> I, I really don't remember ever suggesting that I doubted you. I it remember. always bugs me whenever I see people online using women in this, uh, like, using the word women as the singular form when it's supposed to be woman. <laughs> like, they're always just like... Yes, women are women. It's like, you are a woman. It's like, no, you, you are, are a woman, woman <laughs> not a woman. I, I see so many. I don't know why people. It was like recent too, because it used to not be that bad. But like, now everybody just uses it. They actually reason. realized how much it bothered you, and they were like, I'm going to do this just yeah, to it's spite like, you. You are a woman. You are a no, woman. No, I am a woman. Like, what the? No excuses. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> My <laughs> voice will be heard. <laughs> My lord, you'll let me speak, won't you? Oh, my neck is going to snap. Yes, Mr. Beat, I will allow you to supplement your testimony if you so desire, just don't kill your husband. <laughs> Sometimes the path of least resistance is the sage one. That was a very loud mutter. I heard that! I know. That Japanese man thinks a policeman's wife's word counts for nothing, does he? Yeah. Well, watch out, sir. I won't let you get away with something like that, but my rolling I literally just want to take a fucking nap. <laughs> Duly noted, Mrs. Beat. Please, I humbly ask you to continue. What, are you gonna beat my ass or something? This is really disturbing. What could she possibly be about to say, I wonder? Probably nothing important. Probably a threat. <laughs> Probably a threat. I know what I saw. I know where you live. Hold it! <laughs> yeah, okay. Mrs. B, nobody is questioning what you told us. Dumbass. I saw it, I did. That evening, I saw it clearly. Oh my god. That little eastern man with the whiskers and the funny curved back slinking away from the scene. <sighs> And I know that what I... Motherfucker. And I know what I didn't see as well. <laughs> I didn't see any flaming books or knives flying through the sky. No, but I can send you flying. No, but I'd like to see you try. All very clear. You... You also mentioned something about having a poor sense of direction. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, that's a little embarrassing, really. You are an embarrassment. Oh, my God. I've never had anyone call me that before. I'm always ending up at the wrong place when I've made arrangements to meet Roly. He gets ever so crossed. What the fuck is wrong with you? What are you doing? 
Constable Beat. Is there a problem? I'm turning into a werewolf. You know, we are now in the courtroom, so I would like to file for divorce. Ah. 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 No, sir. No problem, sir. Did your wife's remark just now bring something to mind, perhaps? Oh, uh, well, in a way, sir. Uh, yes, sir. But if I defy her, I die. No, that's so true. Uh, I was one just remembering that the same thing happened that evening, that's all. Stop <gasps> talking. You mean, Mrs. Beat lost her way on the night of the incident. Shut the fuck up! Well, you see, I sent her off to find a police box and then expedite over from mine. But she was gone a fair bit longer than what I was expecting. Well, I thought she'd been back inside ten minutes. My darling was gone a good fifteen. It should have been a year. Oh, really? You're such a tease. <laughs> I don't like you. <laughs> but the reason I was gone so long was because I literally could not stand to look at you any longer. Of the bouquet. Yeah, that's great. The bouquet. Sorry, what? What bouquet are you talking about? No, oh, the bouquet. Oh, it was a present for our wedding anniversary. Really so romantic. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, turn around and look to your right. In what? real life. Turn around and look to your right. Behind you, on your right side. Why? Behind you, on your right. On the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Fucker's huge. Ew! What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that is a whole... That is the size of my arm. Ew! <laughs> that was literally... I thought you were talking about the game, and I was like, there's nothing on the other side of her. <laughs> Anyway. Uh, I want to die. All right, did you read that already? <laughs> um, yes, I did. All right. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Fartings? Sorry. I'm still, I'm still traumatized. He saved up for it, well, with farthings and hap, hap pennies. He found in the ghetto while doing his rounds. For context, there was a giant hey ass pennies. centipede on the wall. Yeah, there was. A very... <laughs> Uh, yeah. It was fucking huge. Yeah, it just came out of nowhere. And now it's twitching in the corner of the room. <laughs> yes, how romantic. I'd forgotten all about it until just now. Had you, my darling? Oh, I wish I could forget you existed. <laughs> ah! <gasps> oh, oh, yes. But that was just between us. No talking about it to anyone else, darling. You have to promise. Oh my fucking god. Really? Oh... What was that all about? Cousin Beat looked very obviously troubled during that exchange. I'm afraid I can't offer any useful insight, Mr. Naroto. But I'm quite sure of one thing. We have to ask Mrs. Beat about the bouquet. I almost said the bouquet again. <laughs> Mrs. Beat, this bouquet you just mentioned. Bouquet. <laughs> I'd like you to add details about it to your testimony, please. Oh, really? Yes, I'd love to. Oh my god. Do you have something to say? Yeah, it's a double to be here. <laughs> you dropped your belquet? Give me your belquet. No, I guess I'll have it. Oh, she gave it to me. Never mind. Huh. Hold it! You mean you dropped the bouquet at the scene of the crime? Yes, that's right. It's oh, I was so upset. When we ran over and saw it was the woman with a knife in her back. I was so shocked, I dropped the bouquet Roly gave me right on the knife and it went farther <laughs> into her body. It was in a dark spot where the street lights weren't casting any light, so I didn't notice at first. And then you went to the police box to report it to the policeman whose beat it was on. Yes, and I came back to the scene together with the conduct the what? <laughs> the other constable, you see. That's when I spotted my bouquet again. But the funny thing was, when I went to pick it up, it was nowhere near the victim's body at all. In case you need reminding Mrs. Beat, the victim is not deceased. Oh, really? Sorry, I must have forgot. I was all flustered for a moment before I heard a voice calling me from the other side of the road. Your husband, presumably. That's right, silly me. I'd gone over to the wrong side of the street. How do you do that? I'm just a little goofy. Although I'm going to blame the bouquet this time, I can't think of how I got there. I really can't. So the bouquet somehow moved from one side of Briar Road to the opposite. Okay. Okay. Mm, curious indeed. Yes, it did. But the worst of it is, I forgot to pick up the bouquet again. Wait, what? Up again when we left the scene. That beautiful rose Roly bought me with that exchange from the motherfucker with that change from the gather he spent so long collecting. 
by bouquet. Do you perhaps mean this sorry, solitary <laughs> rose? That's that's a bouquet? This is sad. Oh! I get roses all the time. Oh, yes, yes, that's it. That's the bouquet Broly bought me for an anniversary with old bits of mm. change he found mm. in the gutter. Mm. Maybe just call it a rose? Tell us, Lord Von Zeeks, where did you come by the flower? According to the report by the police officer in charge of the crime scene investigation, it was found on the edge of the pavement in front of the Garadab household. Sure, you just left it there. <laughs> in front of the Garadab's house? Although it wasn't noticed until the morning, as of they where the street lamps cast no light. It was believed to be of no relevance to the case, since it was found on the opposite side of the thoroughfare. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Could I have it back now, please? No. Okay. Hmm. No, I think for good measure, this rose should be added to the court record as evidence. Oh. <laughs> you just want to keep it to yourself. Yes. But it's a symbol of our love. Too bad. I want it back after the trial. You hear me? Oh, I want it God. back. Good grief. Rest, rest assured that I shall do my very best not to forget this beat. Very best isn't good enough. I want it perfect. I didn't take my off the crime scene for one moment. <laughs> one moment. Yeah, okay. Yeah, what did he say? Objection. <laughs> yeah, okay, buddy. You claim, Constable Beat, there was nothing to report in the 15 or so minutes you were guarding the scene. That cannot be. Oh shit, he's on to us. Oh, you must think you're pretty smart. What, what do you mean to say? In your testimony just now, Mrs. B, you explained to the court that when you arrived back at the scene of the crime with the policeman assigned to that beat, the bouquet you had dropped at this victim's side was no longer anywhere nearby. Objection! No. Yes, on the opposite side of Briar Road to where the victim was attacked. Considering the size of that meager bouquet, if a single sorry bloom can be so described. No doubt it was blown in the wind across the street, back into the gutter where it belongs. Meager! Objection! Yeah. Okay, that was kind of mean, dude. <laughs> but if that was the case, why did Constable B not testify to the fact? Ugh. Oh, damn, Tell we got him. you. No one else approached the scene, and nothing was removed from it. Constable Beat swore that on the Scotland Yard's honor. Well, the bouquet practically be motherfucker belonged to me. It was nothing to do with the case. That's that's why Rowley did mention it, I'm sure. Didn't. Is he incapable of speaking for himself? No. No, because sadly, it's not only your bouquet that we're talking about here. Damn. More than one thing in this case is mysteriously the wrong way around. What are you talking about? Everything's backwards. Think about it. Besides Mrs. B's bouquet, there's Mr. Gerardo's book. Mr. Gerardo's copy of The Lion's Pride, which was thrown out of the window by his wife. Would have struck the pane of casement window and landed here, on the west side of the street. And yet... It was actually found here on the opposite side of the road, in the victim's hand. Meanwhile, according to the testimony we've heard, Miss Bouquet's, Mrs. Bouquet's, yep, <laughs> Mrs. Beat's Bouquet should have been dropped here at the scene of the crime on the east side of the street. But in fact, it wasn't. It was actually found here on the opposite side of the road in front of Mr. and Mrs. Garadev's house. There's no logical explanation for those things, unless somebody deliberately moved them. Gasp. You're not supposed to be doing your job. Stop it. What are you trying to say? The way you're talking, it sounds like you think my Rolly's done something oh wrong. Oh my god, let me go. <laughs> Don't you listen to a word that scrawny lawyer says. <laughs> Wittering on about books and bouquets, why should we care? It's neat picking, that's what it is. Oh god, Mrs. Garadab's come round. Alright, shithead. <laughs> you might call it nit picking, Mrs. Bitch. Garadab. But deliberately meddling with the scene of a crime is a criminal offense. It's called, uh, Bitching. <laughs> Tampering, Mr. Nadahoro. Yeah. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but the person responsible for this tampering cannot admit to it. For a very subtle but compelling reason. Objection! No, stop. Tampering. You barely heard the term before. What do you mean? Tell us, my lord friend. Who would possibly have had any cause to carry out such an elaborate deception? Yes, there is someone who tampered with the scene of the crime that evening. All the evidence and all the testimony points to that one particular person. 
Council, I must demand that you substantiate this conjecture. Who are you saying that is responsible for tampering with the scene of the crime? <laughs> Me, sir. Male Stronger. <laughs> Male Stronger. Take that! Oh, shit! <laughs> Obviously, there's only one person it could have been. Constable Rolly Beat, it was you. What? A policeman? A member of Scotland Yard? What nonsense! Why would my Rolly do something like that? There's no po- Fuck. There's no one straighter than my husband. No Bobby works more toilessly for the people of London. Mrs. Beat, shut the fuck up. You said in your testimony that your husband asked you to go to a nearby police box to fetch the officer on duty. The 15 minutes that you were absent from the scene is the only opportunity anyone had to tamper with it. You're making it up! It's all nonsense! It's all lies! What about that Japanese man with the whiskers? I bet it was him! He did it! Objection. The only saying that because he was a suspect. If that was true, Constable Beat would have seen him do it. Dummy. Oh. And forgive me for pointing it out, but when you dropped your bouquet, Mrs. B, it was after the defendant had fled the scene. <laughs> well, well... Objection! Oh my god. First you make accusations about the landlord and his wife, and now you incriminate a policeman as well. Crazy. But your accusations lack one very important thing. Bring it, big boy. <laughs> you claim the crime scene was tampered with. But there was only one reason anyone could commit such a reckless crime. To hide something. That's right! He's right! Yeah, and I'm gonna be hiding your body in a minute. Um, me or him? All Hopefully of it's him. But my husband and I just happened to be there, that's all. So why would we have anything to hide? It doesn't make any sense. You've offered no motive for this alleged tampering. And until you do, your accusations are nothing but empty threats. <laughs> yeah, okay. Constable Bean had a very good reason for wanting to tamper with the scene of the crime. That's the key to this entire affair. Mr. Naraoro, have you... have you managed to solve this mystery? Hell yeah, pal. What the hell? <laughs> Counsel, you have made a very serious accusation against a London police officer. If you are mistaken, I'm sure I need not point out that your reputation as a lawyer will be irre irrevocably damaged. With that stark warning in mind, you will now explain to the court the motive for this alleged tampering. Alright, let's get it wrong. Let's <laughs> throw the fight. <laughs> yes, my lord. <sighs> Constable Beat's motive for tampering with the part crime. crime scene was to hide where the victim fell. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Where the victim fell to the ground. That is what this Bobby had to cover up at all costs. What? Where the victim fell? You you mean where she was attacked? Yes. What are you talking about? We told you at the very start, didn't we? Oh my god. On the pavement of Briar Road, we saw it happen, remember? Yeah. It was right here, as if anyone was... didn't already fucking know. <laughs> That's certainly what everybody has been led to believe. But in fact, that isn't where the victim was stabbed at all. What? 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 The victim got stabbed? Oh my god, where have you been? <laughs> I'll begin to wonder whether the tumultuous tumultuous trial will end, Counsel. I want it to end right now. If that's your assertion, then the court is dying to know, my Nipponese friend. Where are you proposing that the crime actually took place that evening? Yeah, I'm gonna learn you something today. <laughs> All the way in the bottom right-hand corner. <laughs> but, but that's on the opposite side of the road. No. I I don't understand. I'm about to have my breakdown. I'm very interested to see what this breakdown looks like. On the evening in question, Mr. Gyarados' book fell directly down the open window above. And your bouquet, Mrs. B, never moved at all. What it, what did move was the scene of the crime itself. Good, good gracious. What the hell? What the hell? Objection! I'm going to stop you. Perhaps you haven't been listening to the ample testimony the court has heard. But these witnesses both saw the moment the attack took place. That's that's right, I saw it with my own eyes. You can just tell that Rolly's about a snap. Oh just yeah. The way I he know. Looks. <laughs> it was five o'clock in the evening and already dark. There was typical London fog on the ground. He's gonna pull out his fucking gun. Yeah. When he saw the incident unfold, it ran to the victim's aid. That was actually on the west side of Briar Road. No, that's not true. It it can't 
have been. Oh man, I guess I have to actually be a husband in a second. Actually stand up for my wife. Oh god. Oh man. Oh man. Constable Beat then arranged for you to be absent for a while by sending you to help. And during the 15 minutes you were away, he transplanted the crime scene. He moved all the things shown in this print. The victim herself, the four books. He moved everything, in fact, to the pavement on the east side of Briar Road. Extraordinary. But the constable overlooked one thing. His brain. <laughs> what? What did he overlook? Okay, I presume. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the prosecution told the court just a few minutes ago about the discovery of the Rose Bouquet. Lord Von Sieg said it wasn't noticed until the morning as it lay where the street lamps cast no light. Yes, it couldn't be seen in the dark, obviously. Which is why it was only the bouquet. That was found in its original position on the pavement on the west side of Briar Road. What the fuck? <laughs> and that is the defense's theory about what really happened that evening. How do you respond? Constable Rolly Beat? Don't say anything. Just, just pretend it never happened. Snap. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, well, I'm very sorry. I didn't mean to nod off again. Oh my god. But I haven't god. slept properly in a month. Did I miss anything important? You're going to fucking jail, you bitch! <laughs> oh, really? You what is, <laughs> what no is charming idea about what's that? Happening. It isn't true, is it? What that lawyer said is all lies, isn't it? I wasn't even listening, so I don't know why you're asking me. Oh my god, just listen to me. I know it is because you're the most upstanding, righteous man I know. Oh yeah, totally. You are standing upright. Good night. What are you fucking I had doing? A dream. A terrible dream. All the things I did that night. Oh my god. Everything came out. Come out. Everything exposed. The truth come out? <gasps> What the hell are you saying? Oh my god, shut the fuck up. Only, it seems... It wasn't a dream at all. I'm going to stab you. Good. Good golly! Oh my god, we're going to jail. You know, it looks like he's gonna fight somebody. <laughs> he does. Order, order. What on earth is the meaning of all this? Oh, what? really? Why? Why would you do something like that? Why do don't I look get like too, this Don't thing? sound too sad about that. I know, right? Moving a corpse is... It's a criminal offense, isn't it? Not in my world. What do you mean, not in your world? Wishing the victim dead should be one, too. Constable, explain yourself. Why would you do this? As a respected member of Scotland Yard, your duty is to protect the good people of London Town. But till I wasn't. <laughs> I can't say, <laughs> sir. What? I really am ever so sorry about all this. For damaging the Yard's reputation. For... For everything. This feels really out of place. I have a possible explanation. No, you don't. <laughs> For why, on that particular evening, Constable Beat felt compelled to move the cr the cream of the sri yep, the scene the of the crop, the crop, <laughs> the cream the of the slime. I can think of one reason. It's probably, I guarantee, it's probably because of his wife. Oh yeah, most definitely. What? How could you possibly know? You, a foreigner, presuming to understand the mind of a Scotland Yard policeman. No, it's called understanding the mind of any fucking human. And yet, Lord Van Zeek said it is this foreigner who has uncovered the startling truth of the matter thus far. Damn. I believe it will be beneficial to the court to hear this extraordinary young lawyer's theory. Counsel for the defense, if you please. Yes, my lord. Now then, I think you'd better show us some evidence. At once, my lord. England, Japan, it makes no difference where you come from. Human emotions are the same. And I think I have a fairly good idea of the feelings behind this man's actions. They've only been shoving it down our throats for the entire trial. Yeah, I know, right? What gives away the motive for the constable Bates' unthinkable mm. actions? Uh, preserve the peace within the law to beat. Um, is it the? I think it's the okay. card. No. Do that. Okay. I realize that I'm a foreigner in this land, and I only have just arrived from Japan, which is why all this information about London's so-called bobbies is completely new to me. I've learned that 
through honor though honorable, patrolling the beat is the most demanding work in the world, for example. About time. Give me the peace, looking after the citizens on his beat in all kinds of ways. There's no doubt that the young Bobby is charged with a great deal to do each day, certainly. But for Constable Beat, the day in question was special. Special? How? On account of this bouquet, my lord. Oh, yes! It was our very first wedding anniversary. Hmm. Constable Beat had worked so hard to be able to afford this simple gift for his wife, and was so looking forward to taking her out for a celebratory meal. When he and Mrs. Beat stumbled upon a crime along Briar Road. <laughs> when he saw that shadowy figure through the fog collapse on the pavement ahead of them, one must have gone through the man's mind. <laughs> Him being like, God damn it. <laughs> I know who's talking. <laughs> or sir, just on the one particular day, I was looking forward to celebrating my wedding anniversary. This is me puts up a lot being married to a bobby like me. I want to show my dear wife how much I care. Which is a little. <laughs> just a smidge. This is the warrant card that Constable Beat offered to lend me earlier. Inside, among the rules for patrolling policemen, it says... When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigations and help detectives. Aha! Constable Beat. Is that or is that not the reason why you moved the whole scene of the crime that day? Fucking... Uh, yes. After a thing you said, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. No, nothing is all right. So that's it. It was all to do with the boundary of your beat. I messed up my line. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. To summarize, the incident actually occurred on Constable Beat's beat. Good gracious. Constable, do you realize the gravity of what you've done? No. It, it was the first time since I became a copper, and I'd have a cursed god. Damn. Stay close to me, Pat. The criminal should be still lurking somewhere. I felt like a hero. As we ran over to the scene, I had every intention of doing my duty as a police officer. We've got to report this to the station as quickly as possible. But then it dawned on me. I realized where we were, where the victim was lying, and what that meant for me. When a crime is discovered on his beat, a policeman must assist with the initial investigations and help detectives. Why here? Why did this have to happen here? And why tonight, of all nights? It's fucking stupid. <laughs> why? I'm going to snap. Oh, God. It's a copper's job to guard the scene of the crime, so... I told Pat that she'd have to go to the nearest police box and fetch whoever was on duty there. It was then, when I opened my mouth to speak. It just came out. I couldn't believe the words that were coming out of my own mouth. This is the next beat to mine, Pat. So I'll have to go to the police box that covers it. Turn right along Meerschaum Street, and then... Get the fuck out of my life. <laughs> I'm going to commit a crime. <laughs> Susato. She's like, damn, this is the saddest story I've ever heard. This is literally the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Oh my god, I'm so sad. Alright, so you're guilty. <laughs> Isn't it sad? <laughs> Aww. Uh, Wait, this is um, not the breakdown that I wanted? I'm... No! Uh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is not the breakdown that I <laughs> One wanted! One of the few breakdowns where it's like not them like spazzing the fuck out. Yeah, what the fuck? Oh, constable. I, I just wanted... Just that one night to take my Patricia out for dinner. This is so sad. <laughs> I'm really. It's been so long since I played this case. Yeah. Just that one night. This is so sad. You knew that if the incident was on your beat, your evening celebration would be ruined. And so you decided to move the entire crime scene outside your Damn. jurisdiction. Just across the street to the east pavement of Briar Road, which falls under the neighboring beat's care. Damn. You see, I... I thought... Well, I was sure the victim was dead, you see. I beg your pardon? Oh, of course he did. Otherwise, my Rowley would have never left the poor woman on the freezing cold pavement. No, I was planning to do that anyway. God damn it! <laughs> ah, I see your meaning now. 
Look at me. <laughs> but God got me back from my sins, didn't he? That's why. That's why I missed the rose I bought for Pat. Oh no, Roly, that was all my fault. I should have never dropped it in such a dark place. I'm so sorry, Roly. Well, are you going to forgive me? <laughs> <laughs> and can you tell us, Constable? I know I won't forgive you. <laughs> I'm waiting. How many books did you move from the one side of the road to the other in total? Huh? Oh, uh. Four, it was. Yes, sir. Definitely four. Three of them dropped by Mr. Natsume, and the fourth, being the one that fell from the window upstairs in the Garadub household, of course. But what made you place that book in the victim's hand? When all the other books were scattered haphazardly around, I, I mean... thought it would be a funny meme. <laughs> oh, well, sir. That's because it was a joke. That's how I found it. <laughs> Have you ever heard of those? <laughs> a joke? How you found it? What do you mean? When we first ran over to the scene, uh, the victim was already holding the book. So when I moved everything, I made sure it was still in her hand. You're sure it was this book, The Lion's Pride, that the victim was holding? Oh yes, sir. No doubt about it. Hmm, interesting. 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 I thought it was an open and shut case at the time. You know. You see, fuck. There were only two people in the scene. And Pat and me both saw it happen. However, which way you looked at it, it had to be the fellow who ran off who'd done it. I thought. I couldn't see the harm, really. I didn't think moving it at all over the road would make a jot of difference. I. I suppose this is it for me now. I've had it. It is your go to the gallows, dude. <laughs> They're gonna fucking kill you. My lord, give him the death penalty. <laughs> yes, Lord Von Zeeks. I'll have your badge, boy. I believe that concludes the cross-examination of the witnesses. What the fuck? <laughs> I won? <laughs> Constable, you may withdraw. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Prosecutor, sir. What will become of my Broly? What will happen to him? He's fired. Oh. Like, on fire or fired from his For job? For now, or... you're free to go home. The police will contact you in due course. Please, don't punish my husband. This this was all my fault. It's because I'm always moaning at him for coming home so late. Oh, Pat. Oh, like this, Riley. oh. <laughs> Should I moan a lot? Oh, woo. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it now, Pat. Let's go home. I'm tired. You literally sleep 95% of the fucking time. How are you tired? All right, then, my love. We're going to smash, folks. Oh, God. I don't need to know that. One last thing, Constable. Sir! Let this be a lesson to you. In a criminal investigation, every detail matters, however insignificant it may seem to you. <laughs> and you, player. <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks for fucking us over. Carve that lesson into your mind. And never again make the mistake of tampering with the scene of a crime. Damn. Uh, never again, sir. You, you mean to say? Leave. Now. This trial is not yet over. Uh, uh. Sir, I can suck you off right now. <laughs> Alright, well maybe don't. We're married, so... Oh my god, that was horrible. <laughs> well, that was quite a solid revelation, I must say. Whoever thought of a third party transplanting the entire scene of a crime like that? Indeed, my lord. Nevertheless, there are some immutable facts here. Principally, that the accused Mr. Soski Natsume is the only person who could have possibly committed this crime. Objection! No. Die. No, I disagree. Now that we know the true scene of the incident, there is someone else. Another person who could be responsible for the knife in the victim's back. Me. Forgive me for being presumptuous, but I believe the prosecution is probably well aware of the possibility already. Lord Von Zeeks, is this true? <laughs> Very well. Near the person, if you will, and a further investigation is warranted. The prosecution has no objection to the trial continuing. If you say me, I'll cut off your kneecaps. You will name this other person who could have perpetrated the crime. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Get out here. The defense would once again like to request the cross-examination of a new witness, my lord. 
Once again. My assistant made the same request earlier. And failed at it. In order to finally reveal the truth about this case. It's imperative that we cross-examine juror number four, Mrs. Joan Garrett. Fuck off! <laughs> me? Me? Oh, dearie me. Objection! Oh, I don't want her to understand. Me neither! That request has already been denied. Objection. I'm going home. Did you not listen to any of the trial? But the situation is very different now. Mrs. Garadab, answer me this. No! <laughs> what do you want now, you little toad? <laughs> okay. At the time of the incident, you were engaged in a violent argument with your husband, Mr. John Garadab. Now we're about to be in a violent <laughs> argument with you! Yeah, okay, whatever you say. In the course of the argument, a minor house fire was ignited. And it cleared the smoke from the room. Your husband opened a window that looks out over Briar Road. Well, what of it? I'm getting to that. You threw this book at your husband when he was cornered with his back against the window. Upon striking the pane in the open top hinged casement window, the book plummeted directly down. Finding its way to what we now know to be the true scene of the incident. Yes, and as I said, what of it? Oh my god, you're stupid. During the argument, you were beside yourself with rage. As such, you threw not just books, but anything you can lay your hands on. No! See where I'm going with this? No! So, let me ask you one more time, Mrs. Garadab. This knife, the one removed from the victim's back. Have you really never laid eyes on it before? <laughs> Come on, you fucking liar. <laughs> I don't recall it. Of course you don't. Seriously? Seriously. Am I supposed to remember everything I picked up and threw at my husband? And anyway, the man over there and all that regalia said members of the jury didn't need to testify, didn't he? I messed up my Conveniently, line. yes. Objection! No, I have no recollection of saying that at all, juror number four. Oh. Make no mistake, you jurors are not special in any way. You are not immune to the judicial process. What the fuck? If you know something about this knife, madam, let the truth come out. But, but that's just common... What the fuck? But that's just a common or garden knife. It could have come from anywhere. We have several like that at home. If, if one went missing. How would you expect me to know? What's that? Shut the hell up! Oh, so you have many of those fucking knives, lady? Are you joking? What are you saying? Please, Mrs. Garadab. Stop looking at me! <laughs> Now you listen to me. I I refuse to believe all this nonsense. I couldn't bear the thought that I'd injured someone. Do you hear? I couldn't bear it. Oh, damn. The poor old woman. Wait, fuck. I mean woman. <laughs> yeah, okay, buddy. So, yes, I want evidence. I want to see hard evidence if you're going to insist on this being my fault. Mm. You're going to have to prove to me that I threw that knife, if that's what you think. Come along now, chop chop. Do your worst. Uh, well. Well, Mr. Nadahoto. If I had evidence like that, believe me, I would have thrown it at her already. Let's get Literally the thrown it at her. <laughs> then take the stand, juror. Oh. The prosecution does not object to the defense's request to cross examine this woman. She's really fucking annoying. Thank you, Lord Von Zeeks. Thank you. I'm not too much. I'm going to have to testify. Turn number four. As I'm sure you will appreciate having observed it with your own eyes today. Witness testimony can lead to the most extraordinary truths being unearthed. Truths to which the witnesses themselves may not even have been aware. Oh dearie me. So I demand your full and unadulterated testimony, Mrs. Garadab. And mark my words, in this court of law today, we shall extract the truth. Do you concur, counsels? Certainly, my lord. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's what I'm hoping for, my lord. Yeah, he's like, not We're good doing enough. it. Look at me. This is such a strange feeling. For the first time since arriving in this country, it actually feels real. Get it. <laughs> I'm here, in the old Bailey, and I'm a lawyer. You are. And I got more camera angles and yeah, shots than any other. Game. Yeah, seriously, I love it. In though. the series. Witness, state your name and occupation. No, oh, uh, yes, my name is Joan Garadab. And I'm, um, uh, well, 
I'm a juror and such like. You're not a juror by trade, you fuck. It sounds like she doesn't even know if she's a housewife or a me or one anymore. The court has decided all testimony is required to in order to clarify matters in the case. Do you understand, madam? Yes, my lord! You will tell the court everything that took place in your household on the evening in question. And if I don't? I will end your life. <laughs> and I warn you, do not attempt to hide the truth. Or else what? Oh, oh, dearie me. Are you going to shit yourself? <laughs> Chin up, Jimmy. Nothing to worry about. Ew, now. why are you fuck? Ew, get I'm some so down! Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know you were here, John. I'm so cool. I'm gonna rip that stupid medallion off of you. <laughs> oh my god, now we have another <laughs> couple that's like, oh. What's it only you in the room that day, old thing, was it? Rather think I ought to testify as well, don't you? Can you stop? <laughs> <laughs> But, but what about your knee, dear? Oh yes, it's shadowed in 50 different places. <laughs> okay, thank God. Don't you worry about that. Hardly notice it. I'm not the sort of chap to leave a comrade to face disciplinary action alone. I'm your wife, not a comrade! <laughs> oh, dear, darn fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I presume you're Mr. John Garrido. What the fuck? Yes, sir. Foremost second left. lieutenant of the 3rd Regiment of the 4th Northumberland Fusilers, sir. Seen my fair share of action and now living the quiet life, as it were. The quiet life. Were you not engaged in an incendiary battle with your spouse on the day in question? Uh, well, yes, I fucking was. <clears throat> Quite. I believe this may represent a first in the proud history of the British court. Calling a juror to the witness stand is unprecedented. However, the court will hear your testimony now, juror number four, and that of your husband. You will recount clearly and concisely the events in your home at the time of the incident in question. Sir, at once. So basically, my wife was abusive as fuck. And I'm gonna I stop just... you right there! I wish we were divorced. <laughs> well, the Battle of Garadab. Oh boy. Oh, this was like the oh, perfect oh, place oh, to oh, stop. Oh, so next time on the Great Ace Attorney Adventures, we're gonna cross-examine these two, and this is gonna be the last cross-examination until this case is over. Woohoo! And we will hop into case five, presumably so in the episode after, or next episode. I'm excited. Oh. So, as always, if you all enjoyed and want to keep the series going, show us a love and support, you know what to do. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you all in, in the, the next, next episode. episode.